Hey guys, it's Liz and today I'm showing you how to do these three Halloween looks with things that you can find at a grocery store or at a Halloween store. So let's get started with that cat. So you're going to take a 1 to 1 to 1.5 ratio of gelatin, glycerin, and water, specifically in that order. Once you mix them together, you are supposed to microwave them for about 20 seconds each interval until fully melted. And I warn you, it smells really bad. So moving on to your actual building process. You're going to take the gelatin, which you just heated up, and some fake lashes or really anything that can create that kind of hair effect. And I decided stupidly to cut the individual lashes, but you should really just cut it into segments. As you can see, there is a plastic bag on the desk and, oh, excuse me, that is going to act as a workspace because the gelatin will not melt through it and it will not stick to it, you'll be able to e easily able to peel off your prosthetic. Using the gelatin, hi bubbles, can you not interrupt my workspace? You don't need to die, those fumes are toxic. Moving on. So, using that plastic bag, it will act as a removable space. So, putting the gelatin on top, you're going to start building up the hair follicle that will act as your cat whiskers. Yeah, I'm that extra. So, you're going to keep building up that follicle until you're perfectly happy with it. And it's not going to be perfect, but you can fix that later. So once it is, the gelatin is pretty tacky, start adding the hair into it. Yes, that's my head. Those are tweezers. Use whatever you want. Really, stop putting your head in the shot. Nobody can see. Stop it. Stop. Yep, you blocked everything. Okay. So... As you can see, I'm adding gelatin, taking away, melting more, just basically trying to get a smooth edge, which ended up to not be necessary because I ended up making the smooth edge when it was actually on my face. But if you want to make it to where it's just a stick on and go kind of thing, that's completely up to you. It will be easier and a lot less hassle, but I think it looks a lot better if you smooth it out while, while you are applying it onto your face. So when you're done, you're gonna end up with something like this that you can easily peel off. As you can see, gelatin is not that appealing. And you are going to cut off the excess if you'd like to, unless you already smoothed it out to where you just uh, stick on and go. And this is what it looks like after you cut off the excess, at least for mine. Moving on to the actual application. You're gonna start by adding some eyelash glue to the back of the prosthetic and putting that onto your face in an area that won't move as much as you think it really would. I use an eyelash curler to try and make the whiskers a little more there. And I'm also using some gelatin right now to kind of smooth it out. Hey Bubbles, I see in the background. Now you're going to make this big dramatic winged eyeliner, which you're going to question your existence in the process of it because eyeliner, am I right? And you're going to add a bubble that was inappropriate. You're going to add a little point in your inner corner. And I did that just by resting the eyeliner pen in the inner corner and just dragging down real quick. They're not going to be even, so just, I hope you know that, unless you're perfect at eyeliner. Just don't go crazy over it. It doesn't have to be even, it just has to be like, you know, eyeliner. So, yeah. I'm spending too much time on this eyeliner way too much time. Ellie, this is how you know that you suck at eyeliner. So I just quickly filled in my brows with a powder and a gel. And yep, that was bubbles. Just to add a little bit of dimension. Now using gelatin again, after applying the second eye eyelash, wow, fail. The second whisker, follicle, whatever you want to call it. I tried to smooth it out, but this one was being a little more difficult, so as you can see later on, I ended up just peeling it off and starting from scratch. Wow, that's really, really stoppy. This is what happens when you speed up footage. So I spent way too long trying to do some mascara, but, you know, mascara, am I right? And using a black liner, I'm going to extend my bottom lip and connect it to my top lip, just the corners, you know what I'm talking about, and fill it in with some black lipstick, you know, just to create that kind of point. I could explain this easier, but I don't know how to. 
And then I'm gonna take foundation and dot it on in the area that I'm currently done working in very carefully, which I should have done the base first, but since you are working on the base, it is a lot easier to just put the foundation afterwards. As you can see, I am currently trying to powder the prosthetic, which you really want to do so it doesn't show as much. But yeah, nobody's judging you. So as you can see, I'm still trying to blend it out. It's not working and I'm about to peel it off because I'm getting frustrated with it. When you're applying your foundation over the prosthetic, make sure that the edges are blended out really well because otherwise you will have a hard time with it. Yep, I just peeled it off because I was frustrated with it. So, round two of trying to get it on. And I contoured a little bit, but I forgot to powder first, so I decided to powder first. <laughs> now I'm contouring a little bit. And I add a little bit of black eyeliner into my waterline. You don't have to do this, this is just purely if you want to. Now, doing any side of baking is a little harder with this kind of a look, but um, yeah. As you can see, I did the second method of just trying to blend it out on the plastic bag and then, yep, my camera fell. And I'm just holding it with my hand now. And you can see I'm just powdering the prosthetic after it's been done and adding some foundation just to make it better. And I'm upside down. Good job, Ellie. And this is the completed look. This is good for the kind of, you know, I want to be a cat, but you don't want to be like a basic cat. Yes. Meow. And the most satisfying part. Yes. That feels really good. I'm not even lying. That's my favorite thing about it. And does that not look like pieces of skin? That's really freaking creepy. Anyway, second look. This is the Cut Contour. So using this Wet n Wild palette I found at Walgreens, which is actually really cheap, it's only like six bucks. I'm using the brown shade to do a higher line of contour than I normally do, just to add a little bit of depth into the face. And it's not even, but it will be. And I'm also contouring a little bit of the nose. This is just a base contour, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Using a very dense fake beauty blender, I'm blending that out the best of my ability. And as you can see, I'm actually just ended up rubbing it so it would blend out a lot better. Cause yeah. Now taking the red shade in it, I am going right over the line that I just that I just made, except I'm being a little more messy about it because that is where we're gonna add the blood. I also decided to add some into the crease, but this proved to be, well, honestly, useless. It proved to be useless. So, moving along. <laughs> I blended it out a little bit because I was doing a cut crease, like a literal cut crease, aka Mikey inspired, but it just proved to be difficult and a pain. So ignore the steps I'm taking on my eyes and just listen to what I'm saying instead. Use a brown based color of some sort, any really, and then do this step after blending that into the waterline. I'm crease, what am I talking about? I'm taking some fake blood and a little bit of gelatin to add into it, which I put too much, and this will create kind of like crystals to where it's kind of scabbing over. And using a small detailed brush, I kind of put that into my crease. And as you can see, it looks like blood clots, which I really like. I did this last year for Halloween at school. <sighs> I have school. I hate that so much. Anyway, adding a little more blood, I'm going to start putting it onto the area that I carved out. And I'm applying that. What was that? Okay, I'm applying that a little more messily. And I'm trying to get it to drip, but it's not wanting to. And um, I'm trying to move it with my mat. Looks like it just. This is difficult, okay? Don't do not do that. Bubbles, no, stop. Thank you. It is difficult and you do not want to consume this kind of blood because it stings like hell and it is toxic and you don't want to do that. So just don't do that. Just let it drip and eventually you'll get the look that you're looking for. It's not going to be the best, but it will just take a little bit of time. And this is the completed look of the cut crease or cut contour, whatever you want to call it. I'm terrible at posing. I 
realize this now. So, yeah. On to the third one, which I kept the cut eyes because I'm moving off of the mouth now. And that's blurry. I'm using Rigid Collodion to sink in the skin. Basically what it does is it puckers up the skin to create a scar texture. But it does dry shiny, so you will want to powder it. This is a very simple look. I think this is the simplest of them all if you have the product. Which you can find at most Halloween stores. So I'm just adding a little more and as you can see it sunk in my mouth a little bit. You can also use this to create the um, Joker kind of look. I powdered it a little bit and you can see it a little more, but my brushes, I had just cleaned them so I couldn't use it. But anyway, I'm using a smaller detailed brush to go in with that brown right around the edges. Just to add a little more depth, yeah. I don't know how to narrate guys. And then I'm adding the red on the in inside i'm also adding it to the lip because it's going to be a slit mouth kind of thing yep there you go ellie you're terrible at stuff and i'm taking the brown on the outer of the lip that i did just to add a little bit of bruising texture and i'm adding more blood and i put it in the wrong spot i yep that's sideways we're gonna deal with it i'm adding blood into the parts that i sunk in with the rigid collodion and also a little bit on my lips but careful not to get it into my mouth. Now as you can see, I'm also going to drip blood with the brush, just to add a little bit of texture. And yeah, so when I decided that wasn't working, I decided, yep, full on vampire blood. Good job. Can you tell I'm not the cleanest person in the world? Yeah, this is a technique that has yet to be learned for me. And I just messied it up and caught the blood and this is what happened. I hope you guys, enjoyed, you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more, please subscribe. See you guys later.